This is a note from the Doyles. So thank you for a lovely reception for Pop Doyle. Mom is lucky to have such a wonderful church family. Please accept these donations. It was a $250 donation from the Doyle family. I can't make out the name. Eric, Eric. Eric okay. Our Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah, or Isaiah, is that how you say it? <laughs> 61, verses 10 through 62. Not as referenced in the bulletin, uh, there was a little glitch there. The prophet is pleading for Jerusalem, finding hope in God's grace. Hear the word of God. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown, in it to spring up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Our epistle is from Galatians chapter four, verses four through seven. Here Paul uses language of adoption to describe what Christ has made possible for us through his birth. Hear the word of God. 
But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into you, our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Our gospel reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40, not as referenced in the bulletin. In obedience to the law, Mary and Joseph present their son in the temple and offer a sacrifice. Simeon recognizes the baby and sings his song of praise to God. Hear the word of God. Do we stand for the gospel? Please stand as you are able. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, she was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. <coughs> the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. So I'm going to play for you, O Holy Night. <laughs> 
I heard Erica saying to someone earlier that this is Low Sunday, the Sunday after Christmas and the Sunday after Easter. <clears throat> but because we are a small and tight community, we actually know that we are low for particular reasons. There are different people who are ill and so cannot be with us. We trust that they are able to watch and so I get, the, I get the signal that they are able to watch, and so we greet them and hope that soon they will all be feeling much, much better. It's also good to know that <clears throat> our choir, in its reduced form, can still do what they're called upon to do. So, Thank you for your boldness and for bringing us, bringing us music. <clears throat> I invite us to take just a moment to pray together. Lord, as we move deeper into this season of Christmas, in these Sundays after Christmas, We are so grateful that Christmas wasn't and wasn't meant to be a one-off event. That what you did, what was accomplished on that day continues to live with us. Oh yes, of course, it's part of history. But we know your intention is not for it to be part of history, but to be part of our experience. So we take one more step in that direction today and pray that you would help us who are called by a new name to live into your expectations for us and to do so by your grace. So we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts will be acceptable in your sight. We pray in Christ's name, amen. You shall be called by a new name <clears throat> that the mouth of the Lord will give. Anthony DeMello <clears throat> tells a delightful story of Buddha threatened with death by a bandit. Grant my dying wish, says Buddha. Cut off the branch of that tree. The thief quickly brandishes his sword, and it was done. Now, put it back again. You must be crazy to think 
someone can do that. Buddha's reply, <clears throat> on the contrary, you are crazy to think that you are mighty because you can wound and destroy. The mighty know how to create and yield. From our own personal experience, we know how easy it is to hurt, to wound, and even to destroy. In moments of anger and resentment, we are quick to lash out to others who become the victims of our frustration. To be a healer is much more difficult, much more demanding. Part of our human struggle, and our struggle to be human, is to find ways in which we can control our impulses and channel our aggression. <clears throat> in our Old Testament passage, the prophet Isaiah is engaged in an intercession for Jerusalem, for the people, not the place. He declares that he will not be silenced in pleading for the people and their cause before God. A call to remember our own role in pleading with God for others, our role in interceding and advocating for the poor, the disinherited, for those who are excluded from the dominant ideology of our time. Here, in the face of skepticism, Isaiah affirms God's work of salvation and healing. The prophet uses two images to illustrate God's salvation. One is taken from a wedding ceremony. Salvation is a garment in which the saved are dressed like a bride and a groom adorned for in their finest for their wedding. The second image is agricultural. God will make righteousness and praise spring forth in the same way as a garden will burst into life in the spring. It is in this context that Isaiah celebrates God's incredible capacity to create to renew and to heal. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord shall give. The name will be a sign of Jerusalem's transformation from a desolate place into a crown of beauty and a royal diadem. <coughs> The mighty God of Israel comes not to wound, not to destroy, but to create and to heal. And in the process, will provide a new name as a sign of the things that God has done. Our gospel reminds us that we are not always alert to what God is doing. Just as Isaiah needed to highlight God's work of salvation, so too, when Jesus was born, there were these two aged, pious Jews who declared the greatness of this child. They were able to see what others had overlooked. Simeon is inspired by the Holy Spirit to recognize in the infant Jesus the fulfillment of the hope for Israel's consolation. Anna, a prophetess, was a widow who spent most of her life in the temple in worship, in fasting, and in prayer. She bore her own testimony to what God was doing in this child in order to bring 
salvation to the world. In these two persons, we find a wisdom that comes from years of faithful service. They had lived their lives in the assurance that God was on the throne, despite all indications to the contrary. They believed that God was healing and creating, but their faith was not passive or inert. Theirs was a dynamic faith that allowed them to live on the expectant edge. They spent their lives looking for ways in which they could remain in touch with God's recreative and regenerative work. Their faith allowed them to anticipate what God might yet do. <coughs> Thus, when the child came, they were ready, ready to tell their story, the story of their faith in what God would be doing. Like Isaiah, their confidence in God's work of salvation did not waver. That is what kept, kept them alert. <coughs> the heart of the Christmas message is that our mighty God is a healing and creating God who brings salvation. God always stands over and against those who distort the truth with lies, who steal and cheat, and those who malign others and treat them unfairly. God is a healing and creating God Despite, despite the reality of chaos and evil that appears to undercut God's goodness. Like the bride and groom, you and I need to submit to reclothing with the garments of salvation that God <coughs> will supply. Like nature, we need to be willing to have God's new life spring up within us, even as God will allow righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. In Isaiah's words, we need to take seriously the new name by which you and I are called and then, and then live into that new representation of ourselves. <coughs> I'm sure, I'm sure this is part of what Paul had in mind when he speaks to the Galatian Christians about our being adopted as God's sons and daughters. We are given a new status before God because of what the Christ child has done. In Paul's image, we are no longer slaves, but children of God. And if children, then heirs. Take a moment to process that. This is the incredible good news of this season to each one of us. We are the adopted children of God who are called by a new name if we choose to respond and answer that call. So the good news for us today is that we can live and act as those who have been adopted into God's family this is made possible by all that the Christ child has accomplished for you and me. Of course, that will require some retraining so that we learn to live by our adoptive parents' standards. 
instead of wounding and destroying, we heal and create. We reconcile and we console. We serve the truth. We must learn to embrace the new name God has assigned us, not as those who might boast, but as those who humbly and graciously don the mantle of adoption and then rejoice in the new name we have been given. And as we head into a new year, we will lean upon God's grace to enable us to act in new ways that signal the reality of the new name, the reality of our being adopted sons and daughters and therefore heirs of God. You shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. Thanks be to God. Amen. We sing together <clears throat> the hymn number 249, a hymn of response. There, there's a song in the air. Please be seated. Again, we are <clears throat> grateful for the opportunity to offer our gifts to God, whether we are here gathered together or some who are at home making this possible. But all of this is done in part because we believe in what we do. We affirm 
this mission of our being, God's family, and looking for ways in which each of us can deepen our faith and enrich the walk of discipleship for each other. So we encourage you to be generous as we ask for your gifts at this time. The ushers will receive them now. God, thank you again for the joy, the privilege, the honor of being able to bring to you our gifts, representing just a small part of who we are. But we thank you that with these gifts, each of us makes a statement about supporting you and your kingdom. So we ask your blessing upon these gifts but also upon every giver. And as you receive these gifts and bless them, we pray that you will use them to strengthen and uphold and even extend the ministry of this congregation. But use them also, we pray, to bring in your kingdom of peace with justice. We pray in Christ's name. You may be seated. I think Bo was waiting for that today. <laughs> As we uh, come to our <clears throat> our time of prayer, <clears throat> I just want to again uh, echo the glitch that Erica referenced earlier on and want for you to know that it was not Emma's fault, it is my fault. I gave her the wrong information and she just dutifully typed it in the bulletin. So I want to take responsibility for that and also to remind all of us that confession is good for the soul. <laughs> But as we come to uh, these moments of sharing a time of uh, joy and uh, sorrows, I really think that it's important for us uh, to hear one of the things that I heard again as I was visiting uh, a member of our congregation this week. And just incidentally, I, I am seeking to make a point of getting to you and your families. And so if I haven't yet been there, then you may anticipate me reaching out to you to look for an appropriate time uh, when we can do that. And it's, it's wonderfully informative for me um, to go and visit people and to hear <laughs> some of their experience, uh, what they think and feel. Uh, not only about me, by the way, but uh, 
I, I, I do want to just say that sometimes you get useful information just in the conversation, not like the people are intending to send me a message. It's more like in the conversation, I learn some stuff that is helpful for us. So here's one thing I learned that I hope we can immediately respond to. And that is <clears throat> people who watch us online are very frustrated with this prayer time. And so I'm kind of like, fig so it's prayer. Like, how can you be frustrated with prayer? I mean, we're praying, celebrating good news. We're praying for people in need. The problem is that when they are watching, they have no idea who and what we are praying for, who the family is, what the connection is. So here's what I would like us to try to do. When we ask for an acknowledgement, a celebration or a concern, let's just speak, first of all, clearly and loudly so that these mics can pick it up. But secondly, keep it brief. So who it's for, what it's for. And that will help the people who are watching be a little less frustrated at the very notion of prayer. That wasn't good for me. So let's try that and see how well it works for us today. So let me start off <clears throat> by just mentioning again that uh, Abby had the loss of her brother um, uh, in, in the recent time. So she's been traveling around uh, over the season, but they as a family needed to say farewell to a key part of their family. And then <clears throat> I want to mention that Mary Kay is not here because she has double pink eye. Uh, we hope that she will quickly get over that. And then our uh, technical expert needed several substitutes today. And we are hoping all went well. We'll know when we get home whether or not that was the case. But more importantly, uh, she has been feeling awful uh, with a severe uh, cold or flu. And so uh, she still did the bulletin. She still printed the bulletin. Um, but that's who she is. Uh, but we hope that both Mary Kay and Emma will soon uh, recover. And there are other people in our church family who aren't well, I'm sure. But then there are also celebrations. And so there are some families uh, who are marking this time as something uh, really special. And so with there being two births into the wider family, we want to keep that in mind. Any others? Pris Priscilla? Priscilla? Is Priscilla. She's got back issues. Priscilla needs to uh, stay <clears throat> off her feet a little. And I know she was looking for a ride um, to a rehab appointment, which I, I think she has found for Wednesday. I'll make it brief, but this congregation continues to bless me. And I am so thankful for the love gift that was given to me. I was overwhelmed by it. And I just wanted to say thank you all. It's, you're all family and I'm very, blessed to be a part of that family. It was going to be part of the prayer, but... <laughs> and also, it was going to be in the bulletin, except that we didn't have any space for it there. But I, Eric and I want to endorse uh, that sense of gratitude for your generosity to us, and recognizing that it is a gift to be part of this church family and we want always to remember that. Any others? Let us take time now to pray together.
Good and gracious God, as we come before you with a sense of still being bathed in the glow and the warmth of, of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and that incredible story of your birth, what it means and implies for each one of us, because that birth so long ago is not only precious, for we are reborn each new day as a result of that birth. And we thank you that you continue by your spirit to work in our lives just as you have for generations. You have touched our lives even as you have given direction to prophets of old, to aged and pious servants in your temple, and through people like Paul who helps us to understand that we are not just your children, we are your heirs. So thank you for the new name by which we are called. And we are grateful also for this family and for the joy and benefits of being part of it. As Trish has already given expression to it, it is quite something to have a family to give encouragement and support, affection and love. And so Erica and I join Trish and her husband as we just affirm the joy of being part of this little family of faith. But we also understand that there are other joys to be celebrated as two separate families are extended with the birth of new children. And we thank you for new grandsons for what that does to a family. It's not just about growth and extending the family. It is about the wonder of a new person joining a family circle. So we pray your blessing on those two families, but especially on Oliver and August. And just pray that their entire family circles will be enriched in new ways, unexpected ways, by these births. But then we pray too for Abby and Mary Kay and Emma, Priscilla. Just ask that you will be with each one of them. You know and love them. You understand their needs at this moment. By your spirit, we pray, reach out to them, reach into them and be for them the God of healing that we worship and celebrate. But as we gather today, we understand full well that the world is full of pain. We think particularly of those war zones. We think of the people in the land of your birth, where there is so much destruction and pain, where there have been more deaths than we are able to count or even imagine. So we pray again for peace in the land of your birth. We seek not to blame those on either side. We just seek to be healers and reconcilers and pray that all who have influence, that all who have a capacity to make a difference will lean on those participating in this aggression, in this war at this time, to move their hearts towards some kind of truce, ceasefire, in order that tranquility might reign in that region. 
We pray the same for Ukraine, where the destruction has been palpable, where people live in fear day by day, where a large nation is an aggressor toward a smaller nation. But we understand that the issues are not merely about geography. So pray in the midst of so much that is violent in those places, that somehow there will be voices who will speak your truth, who will continue to proclaim your love and remind everyone we are your children. Now we simply commend each other into the care of your love and your grace. Grateful for our time together here, mindful of many who are not here, but just pray, wherever they are, you would touch their lives with the joy of this season and with the hope for peace. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> maybe another mistake, but we'll find out. There was some conversation in our pre-Christmas time as a result of an illustration in one of my sermons that we should sing <clears throat> this hymn, number 216. You may not know this hymn, and so I just have to beg you to try as hard as you can and hope for the very best. Trish has already guided us through this by playing it, but we will see how well we do. It's number 216, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming. <coughs> I think we're ready for next year. <laughs> Let's pray. 
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sharing of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.